Modern diesel locos today are cracking models, but the head codes are a different matter. So how do we go from this to this? In this video, I'll show you how. Looking across the uh, engine shed area, and there's, uh, there's five locos parked up by the, by the shed. Um, and if we start at one end, this warship here is one of the new Backman models, and it's got a nice little head code, uh, albeit it uses the uh, Backman yellow LED on the inside. And next to this one is one of the Helgen Hymex. Um, here's a Helgen Western, another Helgen Hymex, and to cap it all, the Helgen Falcon. Now clearly these head codes could do with improvement, um, but it's not just limited to, to Helgen. Um, some of the, the older Backman ones, some of the Hornby ones, and certainly the Dapol ones could do with uh, decent head codes. But of course, before we just go and cut some head codes and fit them in, you need to do a bit of research to find out what head codes you need. You don't necessarily um, want the same head codes as fitted. Um, you might want this Western to pull passengers and she'll have something like a, a 1A head code and similarly uh, the Hymec might be, um, uh, what do you call it, a, a Class 9 um, unfitted freight head code. And Falcon there, um, again, might be coming out of Paddington and it's got a 1A07 head code, which is good to go, but you, know, you want to make it your own, so uh, you'll go and find some images of Falcon and then put in a, a head code that's, that's more suitable to your layout. So that's uh, what I intend to do, is take a couple of, a couple of these locos apart and show them how to fit uh, some new head codes. So carrying out a bit of research and going through various books, these are the head codes I've come across, and these are the ones I'll, I'll copy uh, into, into these locos. Uh, the, the, the source really is, 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 is enormous now with the internet. You can go on there, you know, type in... Um, High Mech in Castle Carey or you know um, Westbury, Westerns in Swindon, Bristol, Paddington or whatever, and the same for locos you know that operate you know Deltics going up the uh, the, uh, the the East Coast or whatever. There's a great deal of information available, so there's no reason why we shouldn't have uh, realistic head codes pulling our trains. I often go to um, uh, model railway sh ex exhibitions, and the, you know, you'll see you know a, a Deltic with a with a, a one you know ex express. Um, passenger head code pulling some coal trucks and it, it really doesn't kind of bear up especially when it's on such a a good uh, prototypical layout anyway so uh, there's the research done we know what we want so now let's set about uh, building these head codes well here we are back on my little workbench um, and if you've seen any of my previous videos you'll know that I've covered this in a, in a blanket and the reason for that is whenever you start dropping screws they fly everywhere on the floor but here they tend to stay where they are and also I don't damage the, um, the loco chassis which I've done in the past by turning them over onto a table and this particular high mech I've already broken off um, a couple of years ago uh, the horns at one end um, when I turned it over to fit the chip and I couldn't figure it out why I'd broken them off until I'd done my other high mech which I put the sound in and broke the horns off that one as well. So these are always a good investment, these little um, uh, loco um, foam holders which are pretty good. Um, the other thing I always use is I put all my manuals in, in a binder so in here we'll have the, the instructions for every loco, how you get it apart. Um, I put in there the um, decoder manuals and I also mark up which decoder is in which loco and I kind of put that on the front. It might be a bit too much detail but at least I don't get kind of stuck and I also put post-its on the manuals for the locos when I've been in there and changed the CVs. Let's say I've changed, I don't know, say CV 63 from 10 to 2 to make the, the, the uh, head codes dimmer as it were um, but at least then I have a record of where I, where I am with which loco so that's what I kind of use. And reading the manual for this um, this Hymec, um, apparently all it does is come apart is you run your nail along the edge and it should just come apart. Um, so we'll do that in real time and hopefully it will come apart. And then we can set about doing the um, set about doing the head code. Invariably, they're never as easy as you'd think they're going to be. And this is no exception. I shall even put my reading glasses on for this. Apparently there are four lugs. 
that hold it together. That's it, I can feel this side's gone now. And then the other. And you really don't want to use a tool for this, like a screwdriver, because you'll end up um, sending it up the side of the loco body with a nice deep scratch or a score in it. Um, and uh, it will kind of never be the same. So just bear with me while we do this. We're nearly there, that's three of the lugs have gone. Just this front one on this end. Come on, you little darling. There we go. Off comes the body shell. And there we have it in bits. So we'll put the, uh, the loco to one side. There's the body shell. Um, and now we need to figure out how to get in there and change the head codes. So here we are ready to kick off. Um, I've got a cutting board, um, a scalpel with a brand new blade. You really want, wouldn't want to use a, a used blade. You can't really make, make these, mess these up. A ruler, some sticky tape, um, a blunt uh, lollipop stick type thing to poke out the, the head code um, without scratching it on the loco. And I also use um, an OptiVisor for the close in work. Um, it works well with my reading glasses to give me some um, some definition and I'll leave links to all this kind of stuff in the details if you hit the see more tab. And the product I'm using, I've used it before um, when I did some work on a class 37 and hopefully there should be a link there to that to that video. Um, and these are made by Precision Labels. They come in two sizes for, for four millimeters to the foot, if that makes sense. There's four millimeters to the foot, which um, are true to scale, but there's also 3.6 millimeters to the foot, um, which is slightly um, under scale because certain locos are, the head boxes themselves, I believe, are under scale. So a slightly smaller digits and figures um, look better. Also in the box is some, uh, in, the, in the pack are some frames and you can pick out the frames you want which suit your, your model. I'll show you when we get in nice and close of which, how, how this all works. So we'll, uh, we're ready to go, let's uh, crack on. So the first thing we need to do is obviously to remove the head code uh, from the Hymek and that's done quite simply. Use something blunt like a lollipop stick and, uh, and it just presses out from the inside. That should just pop out, just like that leaves you uh, with your uh, empty uh, empty case. And then there's the two bits there. There's the plastic uh, for the inside and the head code. Let's try and zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can see a little better. So these are the kind of things you get from uh, Precision Labels. Here's two sets of labels. And if you can see them side by side, one is slightly bigger than the other. Um, if you can see down there, if I can kind of show that. Um, then obviously these ones on here are the 3.6 millimeters of the foot, whereas these are the, uh, the four millimeters to the foot. And these are the ones, the ones I want to use. And you also get in there, um, when you order, you need to make sure you get the frames. And these are the frames that you cut out and put these labels onto the back of the frames. And actually there's one there that's labeled up as a Hymet Class 35 which is uh, this one here. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to cut out this frame and then on the back of it is some sticky back plastic, which I'll then peel off and then place it on this board. Um, and I'll use some tape, this, uh, so use some of this tape to stick it down and then um, I'll then select the letters I want. Now the letters I want for this loco are, it's going to be an 8C22. Um, which is a part fitted freight um, and hopefully now you can yep there's the picture of it that's what I'm trying to replicate um, so uh, I'll be back to you when I've cut these out So what it is, it's now uh, sticky side up. I've taken the backing paper off. So now we need to now select uh, select our codes to which ones we're going to put on. Uh, 
Right, so there's the strip of head codes. Um, obviously the eight needs to be the first figure, so that's got to go on my right hand on my right hand side here. And the easiest way to do is rather than cut out these small digits and put them on, is to lay them over like a strip. I don't know if I can sign of show you this. So you try to lay it over like a strip. So hold it in place like so. So there's the eight digit in place. Now hopefully you can see 8C22 and hopefully it's sharp on the camera. And all it needs now is kind of rubbing in so that the letters show through properly and uh, all the air is removed. And there we are. Let's see if you can see that properly. Yeah. Right. So what do we need to do now? We need to trim off the excess. Obviously the other digits are still quite useful so we want to keep all those trim it all off into the size of the frame and then obviously there's the there's the piece of plastic that goes in the head code um, and we've got to make all, make sure all this fits together to go back into the loco So there hopefully you can see the finished head code and there's the plastic to go on top of it so we'll now see if that fits back into the into the logo body shell and see if we have to trim up any more And there, hopefully you can see, is the finished head code. So now what we need to do now is pop it back in the, uh, in the logo body and then uh, see what it looks like um, with a bit of light behind it. So here we are back on the layout and if you keep your eyes on the, uh, the high make in the centre there, there's the one with the, the original set, uh, head code and, uh, and there's the new, the new feature which I think worked out quite well and also based upon the original image. As you look at Falcon, I've dimmed down the lights, uh, the original lights, and, uh, but there is still some light leakage on the, on the, the new arrangements, but I need to really uh, to dim that down further and do a little bit more work. Um, and there's the one it was based upon. So here we are, back on, the, back on the layout. It's all good to go, all wrapped up. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good little video to put together. I enjoy doing the head codes and, of course, the research that goes with it. So uh, if you've enjoyed this and you want to see me knock out a couple more videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.